Hey guys, Adam Caesar here again for another Project Black t-shirt. This week we're ringing in the new year uh, with one of the best and last films I watched in 2016, The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Just came out, uh, just became rentable on VOD. Uh, and we're going to talk about why it's so good and why I like it. We're also going to talk about horror films that have a heavy mystery element to them. And I, in preparing this video and, and thinking about this, I really couldn't think of a better one than John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, if you can think of a of another kind of perfect melding of the mystery and horror genres, kind of a mashup, which is which is what uh, the Autopsy of Jane Doe is. Uh, tell me in a, in the comments so I can make some kind of weird unofficial list. So Andre Overdahl's The Autopsy of Jane Doe, I guess, is his second feature film, and it's. A director you might be uh, familiar with, a Scandinavian director who did Troll Hunter in 2010. So I guess it's been it's been like kind of a six year gap since Troll Hunter. And Troll Hunter was a movie that uh, a, a lot of people really really love. It's a movie that I I like and I, I kind of appreciate, but I didn't quite latch on to the way that I feel like a lot of my genre loving friends were like, oh, did you see Troll Hunter yet? It's this cool you know found footage troll movie. And I, I liked it, and I liked the idea behind it, I liked the special effects. It just, it didn't hit me right in the guts. So when people kind of started losing their minds about the autopsy of Jane Doe, played a bunch of fast, played Fantastic Fest and all these different places, got scooped up by IFC Midnight, I went into it with a little bit of like a kind of grain of salt of like, okay, well this guy's movie you didn't love as much as everyone else loved last time, so just kind of go in with an open mind and see what happens. I freaking love The Autopsy of Jane Doe. It's a really, really great, really claustrophobic, basically two actors on screen for the majority of time, two actors who are alive, uh, plus the uh, titular uh, Jane Doe uh, cadaver. And contrary to a lot of like um, indie horror, VOD kind of movies, this is, a, this is a movie with name actors in it. It's Emile Hirsch and Brian Cox, uh, both of which are, are on screen, like I said, for, for the majority of the film. Uh, they play father-son morticians, or I guess coroners you would call them, because they're kind of... We open with them trying to find the cause of death on this, uh, this guy who seemingly um, died in a fire. Uh, but maybe he hit his head first, and, and we see Brian Cox kind of talking to his son, Emil Hirsch, into, like, into the, cor the correct um, cause of death. And that gives us our thematics for the whole thing, where I think it's even the tagline of the movie, like, everybody has a story. And that's that mystery, that strong mystery element. But I would say... This is a mystery second and a horror movie first because we have a, a, a strong, strong, strong genre element and a, um, a strong supernatural element, which to tell you what the supernatural element is, is a complete spoiler because we really don't know what it is until the last 15 minutes of the movie. We know that bad things are happening in this, in this mortuary. Uh, they're kind of, they're tasked, the sheriff brings in, uh, the sheriff brings in uh, this body, this Jane Doe that they found in the house with a bunch of other bodies and they have no idea how these people died, there are gunshots, and people seem like they're trying to escape this house with this body. It's a, it's a very, very simple story, but one that's done uh, in a way that I don't think we've, we've really seen uh, in, the, in the genre ever, which is very, very hard to do. It's very hard to tell an original story. And there are shades of a lot of other different kinds of movies in The Autopsy of Jane Doe, but first and foremost, what struck me about it and what makes me like it so much is its originality and the fact that it is it is claustrophobic. It is just a couple. It's, it is like kind of a real actor showcase. It is just a couple of you know couple of actors in a in one room plus a hallway plus an elevator for the majority of the movie for the bulk of the movie. It is one of those movies that you could almost see kind of retrofitted into being a stage play if someone wanted to do that. But the movie's perfectly great as is, so I don't know why you would adapt it uh, to another format. Beautiful cinematography, uh, really cool soundtrack that uh, that reminded me the score that reminded me of um, the video the video game Outlast, which is one of my um, one of my favorite horror properties ever. It has a very strong Outlast kind of like choral, spooky, gothic feel to it. Even though the movie doesn't necessarily has that, it's not it's it's a very grounded movie. It doesn't feel. It doesn't feel whimsical, really, even though there is a good amount of gore, there is a, there's a good amount of, like, cadaver nudity, it doesn't feel like a rough movie. It doesn't feel like a, a it doesn't feel like something like, like, Aftermath. 
this isn't um, necromania. This isn't this isn't a, your normal uh, horror movie with a cadaver at the center of it. This is a this is a, a, almost like a gentler movie. The the protagonists, the father son Brian Cox and Emil Hirsch, play very likable characters. They don't have that kind of thing that most I feel like screenwriter 101 people put in. It's like well, if it's a father and a son, they've got to like. They must hate each other, and they must have to work through issues that they have. Like they have, like an absent mother. They have a, you know, they, they have a a recent death of the mother, and that's the issue they're going through. But it, you get the impression that these are two guys that genuinely love and care for each other. So we kind of we, we could skip all that, all that kind of hitting these cliche arcs moments for these two characters, and really focus on the plot. And it's it is a, a it is a plot heavy movie. It is following them as they do the external examination and find peculiar things about Jane Doe's body. Then they do the internal examination, they find more peculiar things, and then they have to go into the brain. It's it's very much structured like that first autopsy we watch them, that first kind of straight autopsy we watch them do, and then we see how crazy Jane Doe's body, how crazy different Jane Doe's body is from the rest of those. It, it's, it's just really, really great. It's really like the last movie we talked about, or the second to last movie we talked about, Eyes of My Mother. I love when a movie is it's, I think it's like 80 minutes, it's like under 90 minutes, just in, out, like get the, gets all that plot through, gets gets every, all those scares in, gets everything that you feel. There's even like a, a tiny hint of like the living dead at the Manchester morgue kind of thing going on here. It's, if you're a horror fan, rent it. You're gonna like it. I guarantee you're probably gonna find something you like about it. If you don't like it as much as I did, don't come to me with your receipts and your Amazon uh, refunds you're looking for. But, uh, I, if you've watched the channel, if you've seen my other videos and you kind of have an idea of what my taste profile is, I think you're going to like this movie. Uh, that's The Autopsy of Jane Doe. For this week's book recommendation, I wanted to go something that uh, maybe mashes up genres a little bit, maybe is a little bit more uh, mystery-based. So we're going to talk about Ed Kurtz's, Ed Kurtz's The Rib from, uh, from Which I Remake the World. You can't see that cover at all, so I'll flash it up now really quick. As with everything, I put the links in the description. Ed Kurtz is a writer I've I've, I've known and I've followed his work for a while now. I, I really like his stuff. This is, without a doubt, hands down, his best book. I'm not even going to say my favorite of his books. It's just his best book. It's It follows a, a, a ex-sheriff's deputy who is also Jojo the dog face boy. He shaves his face um, so that he doesn't have his hair come in. So he's like an ex kind of sideshow act that is small town deputy washed up small town deputy now he's the house detective for a hotel in town and this hygiene film this sex hygiene film is coming in oh it's i should probably mention that it's in that it's in the early uh 20th century uh it's clearly a period uh period story from the from the from the go there is this traveling uh hygiene sex hygiene film coming into town there are people that want to stop it there's like the there's the religious people that think this is filth and they, they need to get it out of the town. There's the teenagers that want to go see it. And then there are the people that are putting on the show that clearly have some kind of occult, um, otherworldly reason for bringing this traveling roadshow into town. It kind of mashes up all of the things that Ed Kurtz does best. Kind of a noir voice, a, a film history feeling to it. He, he's a guy that loves classic cinema and loves like talking about the history of cinema and in a in a strong kind of mystery melancholy down on his luck kind of protagonist we've got all those things and they they mesh so beautifully in this book it's the rib from which i remake the world by ed kurtz yeah one of my favorite books of the year up there with mongrels by stephen graham jones not that we're turning this into a like year-end list but like you can look back through the videos and find out what i like this year that about does it. That was The Autopsy of Jane Doe, rentable now, links in the description, and Ed Curse the Rib from which I remake the world. If you've liked this video, please hit like. If you really like this video, please subscribe to my channel, check out the rest of my videos. If you want to find out more about me, Adam Caesar, I write books. You can sign up for my mailing list. If you do, I send you a free ebook. It's got a couple short stories in there. Uh, it's a novel um, excerpts. Just try it before you buy it. Uh, if you buy it, thank you so much. But yeah, mailing list is free to get on. Just give me your email. Um, have a great day. We're going to have another review coming up shortly this week. Um, see you in 2017.